In this video, I'm going to show you guys how to load your own arcade and console games to the At Games Legends Ultimate Arcade Cabinet. This is Steve from Nostalgia, and let's get started. So before we get started, I do want to say I am well aware that there are other people who have done this video in the past. Uh, what I found is when I was looking at those other videos, a lot of them would just kind of talk about it and leave links in the description. So what I wanted to do was put together a thorough walkthrough for anybody who's new to the cabinet and hasn't really done any of these types of things in the past before. So what I want to do is actually show you guys how to download it, how to install it, how to get it up and running so that way you guys have a step-by-step full-on tutorial. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is we have to download the add-on tool. So we can actually get it right from this website right here. It's on GitHub. What I'm going to do is I will leave all the important links in the description down below. You'll be able to follow along with the video and install things at the same time to make things nice and easy. So as you can see here, we've got this file right over here. It is the add-on tool. All we need to do is click this download button. So that's all you're going to need to do. We're going to click it right now. We're then going to be asked where do we want to save it. And in this case, I'm just going to save it directly to the desktop. There are a few other things that we're going to need as well. Uh, we're going to need the access to the cores and we're going to need access to thumbnails or bezel art or any of those sort of things. So we can go ahead and pre-download those now. Uh, as you can see, I've got a Dropbox link with a bunch of cores in it. These are all tested and working cores. There are other cores available, but they haven't been thoroughly tested. So I'm going to leave a link to these. And as we end up with more thoroughly tested cores, they'll be transferred into this folder here. Additionally, there is another core that is up and running that's not within this package. It's right over here. This is the MAME 2010 core. This is going to give you a lot more compatibility with games like Golden Tee and things like that. So I will leave a link to that as well. What you're going to need to do is you're going to go ahead and download the entire folder in the top right hand corner. I've already got it pre-downloaded and it's on my desktop, so I'm not going to do that, but that's all you're going to need to do there. And then with the MAME 2010 core, exactly the same thing. You're just going to click on this download button. It's going to download it onto wherever you choose. I prefer my desktop when I'm working with things actively and then you're good to go from there. The last thing that you guys can optionally download is a thumbnail pack. So I know that there's been a ton of discussion with people having trouble getting the right thumbnails or getting good thumbnails. What I'm going to do is include a link that'll allow you to download thumbnails for pretty much any console you want, and they come pre-packaged as PNG. So you don't have to deal with finding a JPEG on Google Images and then converting it to PNG. Um, you can just get everything from here. Now, I can't guarantee that every single game will be there, but a huge majority, I'm willing to bet you 99% of the games you're looking for will be available through these packages. So we're gonna go ahead and check that out. Uh, this link as well will be in the description down below. As you can see, you've got pretty much anything that you can imagine that you would want. You've got consoles from Atari all the way down to uh, things like PlayStation. So, so what you're gonna wanna do is look for the main package, which is right over here. It's relatively large, it's about three gigs. It's full of different images and different artwork for the different regions. So if you're looking for a specific region, it should be in there as well. Now keep in mind, there's also an FBA file, uh, which should be here, Final Burn Alpha. You're gonna want that as well because some games are FBA games. So you're gonna need to be able to source those images through that file as well. Um, but again, I've already pre-downloaded everything. I've got everything that I need that way. You guys can go ahead and click on them, save them wherever you want, extract them, and you're good to go. So we're going to go ahead and minimize our web browser because we don't need it anymore. As you can see, I've got the add-on tool installer right here. All we need to do is double click on that. And it's just simply going to ask, where do we want to save it? We can go ahead and save it right in the natural directory that it wants to be saved to. It's very small, just under 10 megabytes. We're going to hit install. Once it's done installing, you'll just have to hit the close button. And as you can see, I now have a new icon on my desktop. This is going to be our add on tool. If you're not familiar with working with zipped files, which I'm sure most of you guys are, you're going to need a software to extract them. So I personally use WinRAR, but you can use 7-Zip. You can use whatever extracting software you want. It's really simple. If you right click on the item, you can extract whatever it is you've downloaded to its own file or you can extract it directly onto the desktop. 
In my case, I always like to extract it to its own folder just in case uh, there's gonna be a ton of files in it and it's not packaged properly. So we're gonna go ahead and extract to working. I'll pull that file over from my other screen right over here. And if you open it up, this is where we're going to see all of our cores. So you can see everything's been downloaded properly. Now, as I said, I already have everything I need, so I don't actually need these, but I just wanted to show you guys how to extract them in case you aren't familiar with it. Now I'm gonna leave a link to WinRAR in the description down below. It's a free download if you don't have an extraction software. Uh, if you do, then use whatever it is that you have. So as I said, I have the thumbnails, I have bezel art, I have everything that I need. What I'm gonna simply do is show you guys how to add a game to your USB drive. We're gonna double click on the add-on tool. And as you can see, it has popped up here and we have everything that we need located right within this tool. So it's actually really nice and handy. The reason why we need to use this tool is because the Legends Ultimate Cabinet requires its own file type in order to read the games. And they are essentially built by compiling the core that the game will run on, the game itself, and any artwork associated with it. So that way the machine has everything it needs right within one file. So in terms of that, it's actually relatively simple. What we're going to do is we just need to fill in the information. In terms of the game title, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna label this 1944 because that's gonna be the first game that we choose. And then in brackets, I'm gonna write arcade. And the reason I'm doing this is because we have access to all the other cores. If you wanted to load up an SNES game, or a Genesis game or something else along those lines, you're gonna to wanna to be able to differentiate which one is an arcade one, which one is a console one. So this kind of gives you a little bit of flexibility in terms of how that game is going to be visually displayed. Next, what we need to do is grab our box art. So as I said, I downloaded that folder from that repository that I listed. I've got everything that I need. I just need to navigate to it. We're gonna go into artwork. I've got it in the main artwork and it's gonna be inside of the box art. So I'm gonna see if I can change the view on this. There we go. So you can see I've got all the different box art here. I just need to locate 1944. And as I mentioned, you're gonna get all of the different artwork for the different regions as well. There it is. So you can see I've got the Japanese artwork, I've got the US artwork, and then I've got an alternative US artwork. It doesn't really matter what we choose. They are in PNG format, they're ready to go. You just double click on the one that you want. It'll look like it doesn't fit, but it will fit properly on the actual console. Next, what we need to do is grab the bezel art. Now this is completely an optional feature. I actually prefer not to have bezel art. Other people really like having bezel art. Either way, it's your choice. The bezel art is going to be what displays around the game, considering the screen is a widescreen and obviously the aspect ratio of these older games are not widescreen. So it kind of fills in the black space that's around the actual game. Uh, so I will fill it in for this purpose. I do have bezel art as well. I'm gonna double click on that. I've got everything resized. Now this is something that's important. The bezel artwork needs to be displayed as 1280 by 720 pixels in terms of its size. If it is not the correct size, it will simply not allow you to add it in. It's really simple to do it. You can either use a software online, which I will leave a link in the description down below, but you can also just open them up right in MS Paint and you can just resize it right there and resave the file. Additionally, you need to make sure that they are also PNG format. You can't put a JPEG in there. So we're gonna go ahead and grab our 1944 artwork bezel. Then we need to select a core. I found for 1944, the MAME 2010 emulator works best. So what we're gonna do is we just need to access that as well. We're gonna go into our cores, at game cores, confirmed working, and then I've got my MAME 2010. And then the final step is you just need to select your game. So I'm gonna go ahead again and grab that. I'll go into my ROMs folder, arcade. We're gonna go into MAME. And we need to rechange this uh, file type down in the bottom. For whatever reason, it defaults to a general ROM file, but we need to select all files. So that way we can see everything that we have here. And I forgot that this is an FBA game, so I need to jump into FBA. So here it is right here, 1944. We're gonna double click on that and we're gonna see that it is there. The nice thing about this tool is that you don't have to load all these things onto your USB drive. 
All you need to do is just get everything on your computer and what we're gonna do is create that UCE file and we're just gonna dump it directly on the USB drive. And then all that's really left to do is pop that into our console and play our game. So one thing I do wanna mention about your USB drive is that it does need to be formatted as either FAT32 or XFAT. So if you haven't done that, right click on the drive and format it. So now that I've got everything that I need for this game specifically, I'm gonna go ahead and build the package. It's gonna ask me, where do you want to save this file? So what we're gonna do is we're gonna to navigate to our USB disk and we're going to save it directly into there. So it's gonna build the UCE package and when that's done, it's just gonna say, hey, package is done, enjoy the game. And there it is, the UCE package file is now ready, have fun. So we just gotta go ahead and hit okay. I'm gonna just open up my USB drive just to make sure that it is there. And you can see right on, it says add on underscore 1944 and then in brackets arcade.uce. This file should be good to go. What I'm gonna go ahead and do is I'm gonna add a bunch more games onto here to give you guys a wider variety and to show you guys a bunch of different games are working properly and everything looks good. And then I'm gonna go ahead and demo that for you guys as well. So we're gonna go ahead and switch over to the arcade cabinet. So now that we've got our console all up and running, uh, it's important to note that what you're gonna need to do is you're gonna wanna make sure that you plug your USB drive into the cabinet after you've turned it on. There has been some reported issues where if you leave your USB drive plugged into the device and then you turn it on that you have issues with loading any of the games. So just make sure that your USB drive is not uh, plugged in. You turn on your cabinet and then you pop your USB drive in. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that now. And what we're gonna notice is on the left hand column where we've got all of our games information directly underneath of the inputs, we will have our add on feature enabled. So we're gonna go ahead and scroll on down to the add-on section and we're gonna take a look at all the games that are loaded and there we are. So you can see right here is 1944. This is the one that we had just uploaded and uh, we've got a bunch of the other games on there as well. But what we're gonna do is we are going to go and jump into 1944 and I'm gonna show you guys what that looks like with all of the bezel art and uh, how that actually runs. And when you look at the screen now, now that we've got the game actually up and running, this is part of the reason why I don't really like having bezels. So you can see if you change the display mode around based off of the different options that we have for the display mode, it doesn't really fit within that bezel. Now, of course, obviously the artwork can be adjusted so that way it works, but then you're starting to get really nitpicky and having to make micro adjustments depending on the game and exactly how it's gonna be displayed. So, I mean, it's, it's all up to personal preference. If you are a fan of the bezel artwork, then please feel free to load it in there. Uh, as you'll see in the next game that I show you guys, I don't include the bezel art and it's just a personal preference thing. But as you guys can see, the game is running really well. Now obviously the bezel that I've got is not in English, but you could always source one that is. So now we're going to go ahead and back on out of this game and I am going to show you guys another game that a lot of people have been talking about. Uh, in the different Facebook groups that are having trouble getting it to load. And that is going to be Golden T 2K or Golden, any of the Golden T titles essentially. So let's go ahead and get Golden T 2K started up so you guys can see that it does in fact work. And for this, you're gonna need to use the MAME 2012 emulator core. Well, there you have it. The game is running and playing incredibly well. But that's all I've got for you for this video. Please subscribe to the channel if you guys like my content. I'm gonna have a bunch more videos coming out on this cabinet, as well as a whole bunch of other stuff I've already started uh, working on and planning. So definitely, definitely I would appreciate that support. Make sure to give the video a thumbs up or a thumbs down if you didn't like it, and leave a comment in the comment section down below. But that's all I've got. Thanks again for watching, and I'll talk to you guys again real soon.